So this is my um, art journey. My name is Freya Adams. Um, just explain how I got here and what led me to this course. So originally I was um, taking a course at Nescot, which was media and broadcasting. However, they referred me to this course because it suited me better. Um, in my old class, it was full of a bunch of unmotivated 16-year-olds who really didn't quite care about the stuff that they were making, their, um, like media that they were making. And it wasn't very inspirational, let me put it that way. So they referred me to this course. I started a month late, but I am really enjoying the course, um, and I'm very excited for the future projects. Um, challenges. I am a, what is trending right now, an EP girl, which basically means I'm very sleepy. Um, uploading work, I've had a little bit of trouble with Jetpack. I did not know that Jetpack and WordPress, even if you upload it to Jetpack, um, on your WordPress like website, it's, it's not going to upload. So I've been working on WordPress and trying to separate things so that... Um, the mug customers are going to be happy with like the content. Um, yeah. Uh, medication. I'm on some sedatives that um, keep me calm because I do struggle with my mental health, which can be very challenging at times. But um, I do have quite good integrity and resilience to. Um, you know, achieve something in my life. I don't want to just waste away in my bed with my cat. As much as I love my little kitten, she is not going to earn me money, is she? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair. So my inspirations to success, honestly, is money. I do care about money. I want to be able to provide for myself. I want to live a good lifestyle. Um, I mean, if the world go round, you know, if you're the economy, um, with my art pieces, I want to leave a mark on humanity, and I know that's very cliche, but um, I would like to at least like be in people's memories. So I want to create art that's going to stick with someone for the meaning, for the presentation, and for how, um, you know, the overall of reaction is, whether it's my desired outcome or whether they interpret it in a different way, that's fine with me. I just really want to, um, you know, have that back from people. And I wanted to do some, something with my life. As I said before, um, with struggling with mental health, sometimes it can really lead you to just sleep a lot and um, be very unmotivated to do anything. Um, my genetic, so I can't really help it, but I have proved that I can, you know, go to a college and I can succeed in life by expressing my mental health through art, expressing my feelings through art, expressing the way that I view the world through my art, and there's really no way of doing art wrong. You can never do anything in art wrong. Um, and I'm not afraid to make controversial art as well. Um, is that it? That was the one. Um, stuff I'd like to create. Um, I would like to go into cinematography. I'm very passionate about the short films, especially in England, that was, as we know, um, this is England where they um, for a synopsis of the film, um, there was a child who made friends with skinheads and then they raised him up, but um, some of them were quite fascist and he um, like got into that lifestyle. However, he did get out of it because he went to the right crowd. But I think that it has a like it has an influence on how England is perceived by other countries and I would like to change that. I would like to show more of how kind people in London can be or around 
England in general, because you know it's quite really big. Um, evidentially, I would like to move to America because um, that is where the money is in media and broadcasting for this movie making. Um, it is quite sad that um, with like even the BBC, it's not like a high paying job. It's like fifty seven k a year, which you know it's good. It's good. It's not great. Um, yeah, I'd like to provide for me and my cats and yeah. Cool, thank you. Thank you okay, so we'll do some questions. I've got a quick one. If, if you guys might just write some more stuff and maybe think about what you want to ask. Um, so I was talking, it was wondering about your like idea of like short films to change people's perceptions of England. So this is England is like uh, have you anyone watched that? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like uh, talking about the skinhead culture within the eighties, you know, kind of like the people that adopted Fred Perry and Lambretta and Ben Sherman and that sort of punk era that also traversed into very right wing opinions. Um, quite interesting actually when I went to Germany once, uh, I was wearing Fred Perry uh, Polo shirt. This is like when I was an indie kid, and uh, they said, "Don't wear that round here. People will think you're a Nazi." And I was like, "Well, Fred Perry was an English tennis player. I think I was about 20 at the time." Um, but that—that's—that's that's what we call like you know, not cultural appropriation, but appropriation by certain groups. They—they they try to appropriate certain styles, certain functions. But I was interested to think modern culture. Why? How you think you're trying to change that? And why do you think people have a perception of England, a negative perception in certain ways? What, what do you think has caused that, like over the history? Um, over the history, I think it is um, the rise in crime, um, especially okay. knife crime and stuff like that. Um, when we are presented on the news, most of it's not great. Um, what do you think causes knife crime or rising knife crime? Causes knife crime, poverty. <clears throat> Um, I'd like to change the perception of poverty as well because yeah. I don't know if you remember like back in the day 2000 and I don't know 10 maybe there was like those shows where they would slate um, people in poverty mm -hmm. and I think that maybe documentaries or short films about how um, people genuinely struggle with money in this yeah. country and how the cost of living crisis is really ripping people mm -hmm. up. Um, yeah, that's great. So like a uh, holistic approach to understanding the reasons behind certain things because obviously like crimes people are held accountable but in general if crime rises that yeah like you said it's going to poverty also like i was thinking of general perceptions related to like things like colonialism and the empire and sort of that might influence people's negative like international people's negative opinions uh okay but that's interesting so how, how do you think you could explore that in films, like by looking into more positive sides of society? Positive sides of society, um, I'd like to definitely show that the homeless aren't inherently evil people because that is quite a... Do you think um, people think that though? Well, or I've heard a just, lot of people yeah. state the homeless and say that they're yeah. just money grabbing and they have their own hotels and oh, stuff, wow. which isn't true. As a person who grew up in um, a hostel myself, I know that that's not the case. Um, yeah. People do struggle with like dilemmas of drug abuse or alcohol abuse, but yeah. I mean, if you put yourself, if if you're playing devil's advocate, if you was in that position, you would want to stay with that as well. Mm -hmm. Personally, I would. Um, and I'd like to also show, you know, the community. The community does try so much to help people in need, especially like families, there's like a lot of food banks going around at the moment. I mm. think we're in quite a high, um, <clears throat> like a lot of people are using food banks at the moment because of the cost of everything. Yeah, there's evidence to say the gap has widened, yeah. Mm. And then there's, about naming names, quite divisive figures that will say like homelessness is a lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. So like, I guess, yeah, Sounds like your filmmaking would be the aim to traverse these people in government who try to polarise our society and sort of go past that yeah. and talk to real people, the people we don't see on TV. Yeah. 
the people that have more positive opinions and more love and empathy. Yeah. So that sort of thing. As opposed to the odd still other brave men that we see on TV. <laughs> um, right, so let's move on to you guys. I want to hear some questions. And um, are you interested in documentary filming or Um, I'm more focused on documentaries, however, I mean, I would like to make um, a film of actors and stuff. Um, I'm not really sure what type of film. Um, one of my favourite directors is Stanley Kubrick. He made Eyes Wide Shut. He also made um, another film that was quite popular. Um, so I'd like to do that oh, kind of thing. Yeah, Clockwork Orange, Clockwork Orange. It was in my head. Um, which is a really good film, it's very opinionated on how you can't just psychologically <coughs> manipulate you into um, being better. That's a great film. That's a great film. But yes, to answer your question, I'd like to do both. Yeah. What attracted you to Stanley Kubrick's films? My brother. My brother is my biggest influence into media and um, like filmmaking. So that's who pointed you in the direction. But yes. what was it specifically about Kubrick's films? Um, it was the theories behind it that I'm going to get into because um, they're quite heavy topics. Okay. So, yeah. Um, my brother was my biggest influence. He, um, we watched a film called Rick Room for a Dream, yeah. and we were both appreciating the colorism and the cinematic like shots, very right, spinning out where he, where um, the girlfriend says, "I love you, Harry. You're a good person." It's like the spinning out shot. Me and my brother were both like, this, that shot is amazing, and that's mm -hmm. how we like bonded by colorism of films, the way that they were shot, the way the story, um, like the plot, yeah. is like given. Mm -hmm. um, he also showed me one of his favorite films called Lost in Translation, which I think is a really good film as well. Yeah. So it's like colors, the sort of style. Colors and how they. Um, like represent the mood, the overall mood of what the scene is like. And you say you don't want to go into heavy topics, is that because it would take too long? Like, is there a word you could use or a couple of words? Conspiracy theories. Okay. Yeah. What well, we're in the film, okay. Alright. So what like conspiracy theories that are within the plot or outside of the plot? Um, within the plot and the yeah. messaging that he was trying to get without actually saying it. Okay. And how we often... Is that a conspiracy theory or is that an interpretation? Oh god, that's very hard. <laughs> no, it's interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. like, there's obviously... Yeah, mm. like people are entitled to have interpretations. It is it's all the time. No, of course, but um, there's a specific one with Eyes Wide Shut where it was... Um, and there was a conspiracy theory about, um, I don't know if it's about saying it, a ring. A ring. A, a ring. A ring. Um, right. Yeah. Which one? Which one? Um, eyes wide shut. Like, you know, rings in the ring. Ring, like, um. A cult. A cult. Yeah, like a cult. A cult, yeah. A cultism and, um, like, ritualistic reasons. Mm -hmm. so, they weren't hiding it, but they were just saying it. Huh? I don't feel like they were like hiding it, but they were just like saying it right Yeah, it was stated quite clearly, and if you really look into the background, you can really notice a lot more than um, like you would if you were just watching a film into the world. Yeah. If you were very interested in that. So you're saying it's kind of spot out anyway? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's even like films that have tried to. Like the, there's a film that I wouldn't recommend just like watching. It's the most horrific film, but Can Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, I've seen it. Um, but like, essentially, what happened was it is like it's horrible because it's like genuine animal cruelty in it. So it is it is ghastly. Um, 
so I don't recommend it. It is upsetting because of that. But the direct, the, but in terms of concept, the director actually paid um, paid the some actors to disappear, so like so that people believe that they actually died in the film. So it's interesting. It's actually a director that was creating that. Obviously, there wasn't any people harmed. There wasn't yeah. anyone harmed. Uh, did you know that they had to show up to court because he was being charged with murder? Yeah. <laughs> I know. And he just kept going with it. That's like taking it really, <laughs> yeah, really so seriously. Like, I mean, him go into court and yeah. Sorry. But um, he's kind of just putting himself in the fire in mind there. Anyway, he wanted to make it extremely genuine. <laughs> but anyway. Um, okay, has anyone else got any questions? What about what Bray was talking about? We've been focusing a lot on the latter slides. What about the first few slides? You know, got any thoughts? Would you be interested in, I know you spoke about highlighting things about homelessness, would you be interested in highlighting conflicts on mental health issues in your films as well? Yeah, definitely. And how they are very metabolic as well, they can be linked to. Do you think in some ways though they're more understood than they were in the past? Like obviously they are misunderstood and it's, it's like an invisible thing. Oh, 100%. But there, there's also like parts that are a bit more understood now. 100%. In a lot of ways, like compared to the past. So I guess you could explore that in a way. How that would be um, really interesting. I'd like to maybe do a documentary on the psych ward, but then again that could grow with like a And what, sorry? Uh, some people have done, you know, um, documentaries where they go into a psych ward or something. Oh, okay. Just, like, interview the patients but they end up um there was a specific one i watched on sorry i can't remember the name but um they actually found out that the staff were abusing them even more and um it was very heartbreaking to watch yeah i mean louis Theroux's done all kinds of stuff did you ever watch louis Theroux? i think it was probably mm -hmm. he's done ones with like the kids in america that are on medication mm -hmm. yeah uh, they're like 10. um anyway Cool. Um, nobody else has got any more questions? No? I'm intrigued about this cat's lavish lifestyle. We can talk about the money, you will know. It must be feeding it some high quality stuff. Yeah, well. Or, sorry, not it. I, I hate it because I've got a cat as well. We've both got separate, and I hate it when people go, it. Yeah. Then, or her. <laughs> it's a her. She's a her. All right. Cool. She's uh, eating at the moment, it's not very, um, she's um, having a bit of a hard time, but she's getting through it. Oh, well, hopefully it's very soon. Well, maybe. She wakes me up at 6am for cuddles, it's very beautiful. Yeah, I tend to wake my cat up at 6am for cuddles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, I'm forgetting that this is all on video, so I'm sure Philippe's going to really enjoy this. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, cool, anyone got any cool questions? Alright, let's have a clap. Um, all right. Let me just check it's still recording. So, cool. So we've got Shakira now, and then that will be it for this morning for presentations. Everyone got a sheet, so you need to grab a new sheet. Um, joke like, have you got the sheets? Um, or uh, one sheet. One sheet. <laughs> yeah, one, sheet one sheet does. One sheet does. So one sheet does. One sheet does. One Isolating, so I never really got like a world view 
around me. What I learned was mostly through anime, TV shows, and that's it. The types of shows that kind of like shaped my personality were Bleach, Cardcaptor Sakura, Naruto, like all the originals, but they kind of left like a really lasting impression on me. It really taught me like values, like friendship, understanding, and the art styles really like stuck with me creatively and it was what I was mostly interested in since a very young age. <laughs> My main hobbies are like alternative type of music. I listen to a lot of music. It's mainly metal, punk, rock type of vibes, especially like Ramstein, Mel Doma, like Ice Peak. I kind of are drawn to artists who have like a lot to say and express through their music. Especially with Ice Peak, I really loved how they kind of showed like misogyny and like in Russia and like how bad the situation is for them. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like a big boom because when Russia, the thing between Russia and Ukraine happened, it turned out that in a lot of their music, they kind of like warned a lot of people about it and nobody kind of, everyone just blanked on it. They were even blacklisted in Russia for one at one point because of how like expressive their music got. It really like sticks to me with like the dark, spooky type of vibes. This one? <laughs> hey. I hate presenting. You're doing great. The things I'm honestly looking forward to is honestly finishing this course because my education is very important to me. As I have not been to secondary school, I never really managed to learn anything about history, geometry, science. I learned nothing. My head was completely empty and filled with anime and manga. So my education is my main kind of goal in my life to try and push myself forward so I can actually like say that I've, I've made something of myself that like I'm not everything my family kind of expected of me because my family kind of they ignored me, they never expected anything from me, no goals, no nothing. I had to 100% like only have myself, only, I can only push myself forward. I had to learn from a young age that everything was on me. And so now I'm trying to fight basically for survival. <laughs> My, one of the things I really hope for is I get a pet snake. I love creepy animals and like creepy crawly spiders and like I love cows actually. I want a highland cow, like the big fluffy cows. It's kind of like my main thing in the future is I can make enough money to own like a farm so I can rescue abused animals and just sit there and like brush their furs <laughs> in my cottage core dresses. <laughs> And so I need to make a lot of money with that. Uh, since I have not really been traveling much, I really want to explore the world since it's, it's, there's a lot going on out there and I, I, haven't, I don't even know London. Secret. <laughs> um, my plans for the future is hopefully to go to UAL or Kingston University. Those are the two main universities I'm currently looking at. I've looked at, I've been to an open day with King's College London and when I went there I kind of got dragged to like the computer science department <laughs> and they kind of really wanted me to like think about going into engineering and I'm kind of stuck between choosing illustration, animation and engineering especially since I'm, I found out like I'm really deeply interested in all of those things but I'm probably going to be leaning more towards illustration and animation since I want to go into game design in the future since that's like my main passion. Cool. <laughs> Is there any questions? Anything? <laughs>
Yes. So just on the UEL thing, have you thought yeah. about specifically which UEL college does mm, this one? Yeah, there's a bunch of So colleges. like you're thinking, what did you say, animation? Illustration, animation. animation. Yeah, so London College of Communication is pretty good for that. Yeah. That's part of UAL. Um, and also I was saying, going to say, you can apply to a range of courses. Last year we had a guy who was like, I want to do fine art or games design or I can't remember the other one, but he applied for like a range. Yeah. He had like six choices. So. My main one is like, if I get into UAL and Kingston though, yeah. I'm most likely probably going to choose Kingston. Okay. Simply because um, I did go to their opening day yeah. and I did look at the course and it, they had an illustration and animation oh, course yeah. all in one. Nice. And it was quite a really it was a really good course. They have like they can you can go to Japan, like New Great. York, Shanghai, Singapore, all of that in your third year. You can work with brands like San Rio and everything as well. And I was really deeply interested in that. And I was like, yeah. That's great. So you went to the was that recently? Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's really good to I have really, like a, really a hard, choice um, that you want. Like, I'm really proud of myself, honestly, for going to the opening day. Did you talk to any of the tutors? Well? Yeah, I spoke to oh, the cool. main tutors. Nice. Because I don't really go outside my house that much. So I have a lot of social anxiety. Mm. So like actually, like digging in the ground and actually going there in the trenches, it was kind of like really nerve wracking for me to like even get up to talk to them. Yeah. But I managed to do it and I'm like, it's like one step further for me in gaining like the confidence mm. that I need to like help with my work because I really do lack like a lot of self confidence. <laughs> We wouldn't think it, would we, guys? Not you and No, know. but that's kind of how I know. I that's work. how it feels. It's about how you feel, not how you look. Yeah. 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 Uh, but that's great. I mean, it's great that you always hit it. You know, your attendance is great. No, yeah. And, uh, Especially, yeah. I have to keep up with my attendance a lot because I suffer with mental health yeah. and I have multiple sclerosis, which is an autoimmune disease that affects your brain. So it has left me with like knee damage. I did go blind for six months. I was in a wheelchair for like three months as well. And like that type of stuff does happen. It's kind of, so I have to try and keep with everything. So that way I'm prepared just in case mm. actually shit does go down. Wow. Okay. Uh, has anybody got any questions on what we saw? Any comments? I've got one. Yeah. yeah. So I saw your presentation at quite a lot of show in anime. Yeah. So what attracted you to that in the first place? Um, I kind of got more drawn towards shonen anime compared to shoujo because in a lot of shoujo anime it's very light, romantic, but with shonen it does get deeper and more realistic. It's a lot. The plot's a lot more realistic than in shoujo anime. In shoujo anime, you would literally see a girl running with a toast in her mouth, and next thing you know, she's banged into a guy, and next thing you know, that's the male male lead. You know, but with shonen anime, they actually build up the plot from the ground up, and it's got a lot more depth. Mm. I've got a follow-up question. Also, is what? Um, how do you think? Um, like the representation of women is like it's changing the show in anime. Ah, uh, yeah. Also, so. I've watched a ton of lots of anime. The representation of women in anime is really bad <laughs> in general, even kind of now. I feel like they do do a lot better than they used to, especially since in a lot of old animes it's mostly like girls with big boobs, small waists, big hips, really young faces, and stuff like that, but nowadays like the body proportions are actually getting more realistic. The female characters actually have depth to them, they're not just there as fan service. Mm. But most of the time in like the older animes, yeah, the girls are main characters, but they're mostly just fan service. Like there was an anime called High School of the Dead. Yeah. It's a very popular anime. It's based where like a zombie apocalypse happens, they're in a high school, but the fan service of the anime is atrocious. There's literally a girl where a bullet was shot and her boobs are waving like that and the bullet's just going through. And I'm like, <laughs> why? 
That's crazy. Yeah, the body proportions are a lot more realistic nowadays. I think that's mainly because of like a lot of people do push it too far. They know they can push it very far since the laws in Japan are very different when it comes to like animated things. Even with like real life, as long as like it's covered here and there, you it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. What about is that also to do? That's got to be to do with, with male gaze, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Like all the anime being quite male dominated industry, maybe that's changing. So surprisingly, it has actually changed a lot. There is a lot more anime and manga being written and produced by females mm -hmm. nowadays and it is surprisingly the romance is actually better <laughs> the stories are surprisingly deeper sometimes as well there's a lot less fan service yeah and it's overall just like it checks a lot of good boxes yeah cool any other questions guys come on speak up remember this is speaking and listening i don't know if i you're debating between animation, illustration, and engineering. Yeah. What's with the, the <laughs> engineering? Yeah, great, great question. <laughs> um, well, I got dragged to the opening day and like... By somebody who was doing, doing computer science. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I started speaking to the woman in the engineering um, course and she was talking about how there's not a lot of creatives in the engineering industry right now, and they're looking mm. to like increase that. Mm. And the fact is, is, like in the course, I was like, mm, maybe it's not for me. I don't really know much about engineering. But she explained like with everything, they teach you everything on the course from day one, and it will really help your creativity. Will actually improve your engineering compared to if you actually just did some random stuff. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. Wow. Plus, I thought it would be really cool if I actually could say I'm an engineer. <laughs> what sort of things would you like to engineer, though? Well, just completely alien to me, so I don't. Yeah. To be honest, I was thinking if I wanted to do engineering, I'd probably go try and do something with like NASA. Wow. Something like that, with like space engineering and stuff like that. I thought it was really good, especially since I'm very interested in like physics, and yeah. like astronomy, um, and like geology. I really enjoy that type of stuff. I feel like it's very unique. I like space better than the ocean. You can't see anything there, and I don't really want to be like creating massive oil rigs so they can sit there and look nowhere. <laughs> cool. Anybody else got something to say? Any comments? What are your views on creating an anime yourself? Um, I feel like if I was going to create an anime, I probably would draw up a manga first and see how that goes. Because if that goes well, then the manga could be made into an anime. Yeah. And I feel like that would be more where I would go around with it. Because if I had to choose between animation and illustration, I'd probably go more for illustration because it'll teach me a lot more than just the animation. Yeah. Hmm. You look like you're pondering about something. Yeah, what do we think about Westerners doing manga? Well, actually, Straight in there. There's, a lot. <laughs> there's actually a couple people who have. Yeah, now. but what do we think? Is it, is it okay? I think it's okay. Yeah? It should be. I guess the flip side would be... What, what could be the flip side? It's not as authentic, you know, I guess. Mm. That's still okay. Good you can have twists, can't you? It's like, it's, it's a style, isn't it? Yeah. I guess. And it's like something that we, because we're Westerners, I guess we wouldn't truly understand the culture as much as someone from the East would. But uh, that's not to say we can't appreciate a style, is it? Yeah, yeah. Has anyone else got any thoughts on that? But you could argue that if she spent, um, sorry, no, she has the name, Shigeru spent some time in um, Japan, then she would have a taste of the culture. Yeah, yeah, definitely a taste, yeah, that's for sure. That's, yeah, that's so many things to say. But then, like, you could also, like, I mean, even making a manga with, or an anime, with absolutely no, if, even if you didn't have any taste of the culture, that's sort of making a commentary yourself it's like that kind of connectivity around the world trying to connect with things that are either 
like exotic or kind of almost alien to us, like for lack of a better term. I don't really like that term because a lot of right wing people use that term. But the point I'm making is, yeah, I've never been to Japan. I don't know what it's like. But it's a, if I was going to make like manga and anime, what does that say? That's that's me trying to reach out to something. That's me trying, me, me being like a, a adopting a position of, of a fan, isn't it? Of being a fan. Do I then make something conceptual about being a fan? Like about being uh, a lot of um, like I'm not going to pretend to be a manga artist. Sorry. There are lots of Westerners who have actually like produced their own manga or yeah. anime have like been very well received yeah. with like the like Asian within like the Asian community, mm -hmm. especially since like with anime since it is purely an art style, like the story can be whatever you want it yeah. to be. As long as and like anime as an art style, it's very different. Like they hold all the same bases, but it's so broad that you can look at one anime art style, look at another, and think mm -hmm. they're completely different. How are they the same art style? Yeah, yeah. But That's interesting. Are. So like they could be like West. I guess what could be interesting is to find out what kind of westernized manga is accepted in the East and what kind of Western manga is not accepted in the East. In general, we're talking in general here, like what defines that? I guess it's like, it's almost like, I guess if it's trying not too hard to be authentic, then it almost is more successful, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like here, I'm a Westerner, I've had a taste of Japan, I'm trying this out, I'm, I'm using this style because I love it, but I'm not going to pretend oh, no, yeah. I'm born and raised in Japan. If you literally, uh, if you as a Westerner, created an anime based off of Japan, they will look at you and they will call you a weeb. A what? A weeb. Okay. <laughs> and it's not even like the best type of like word. type of word they could use. It's the worst one. It's like the insult. It's insulting. Right. <laughs> because in their eyes, they kind of look at you in a way of like you don't really know the culture. You can do anime, but you're literally doing one on the culture. You don't really yeah. know. It's like you're not really properly re representing it either, mm. as well. So there's a lot of difficulty. Yeah. There. Mm. Okay. Um. Cool. Anybody else got any thoughts or questions? I've got one more question. Okay. Um, so it seems like a lot of people have this like. Um, I guess interest in alternative culture and it kind of coincides with um, anime and stuff. So you say that the anime and the manga kind of like somewhat influence the alternative taste of music, or you say like they it definitely you know? have. There's a lot of techno music nowadays that has kind of anime themes to it. Like there's um, also an artist I don't know like Quartz. Mm -hmm. Like he kind of bases his type of deep like cutesy music like off of like anime shoujo like type of girls and stuff like that and he uses that like type of wording in his like writing for his for his songs as well. Anime and manga really do deeply like connect with like alternative music especially since Japan as a whole is a very like quiet type of keep to yourself country. They usually try to express themselves more with their clothing. So they have a ton of different fashion styles like um, Lolita, Visual yeah, K, yeah. like there are even fashion styles like gothic fashion styles that like are part of the music subculture and then they bring kind of like anime and manga bits mm. into it to kind of like make it as a whole. Like Japan loves like Lolita, they love Lolita clothing. It's kind of like one of the biggest like sub clothing you can really wear in Japan. It was very like hush hush because uh, people do know about like the book Lolita and then there's this fashion called Lolita. And it's like Oof, you can't kind of keep them the same. And that's why like they kind of changed the name of that fashion to EGL, even though the fashion only like is like Rococo era, like Victorian era style clothing, everyone kind of kind of kept it with the books, so they had to keep that away. Remember when we were talking about context timelines and this sort of idea of artists, technology, world events, and thinking about all these things. So to add to that, I'd say about Japan, technology-wise, is where some of the best hi-fi systems come from, okay? So you, 
hi-fi. So the hi-fi is like a, a thing that you play CDs or tapes or, or digital files with. And in terms of sound design, there's not many countries that do it better than Japan. So again, that feeds into this culture of music and this idea of music quality, you know? So like things like Spotify, that ruins music because <laughs> it turns it into MP3s and it turns it into low quality. But you've got things like Tidal, which is like hi-fi music. It's more expensive, but in Japan, they are, and that's what I love, they, they are snobs about music like I am. <laughs> and um, they like really high quality sound. So this is where that then feeds into that. And like, you know, I'm, a big, I'm not really into alternative as much as I'm say electronic music, but that's where that, where you've got to think like culturally about, about like technology, world events, like mm. things that have happened yeah. that inspire oh, culture. There's one thing I can mention, you'd probably be really interested in then. Um, this is Rana. He is a singer in Japan mm -hmm. from like the 90s. He kind of dresses up in gothic clothes to clothing whenever he's on stage mm -hmm. and everything oh. like that, and everyone kind of thought he was a girl. But no, he's a guy. And it kind of like boomed for like the dark, like gothic type of subcultures mm. in Japan and yeah, that's right. when they started to kind of like become more well known yeah. because of him. <laughs> yeah, very. And what Kamali was saying about influences, like remember that Jeremy Della spider diagram where there's like arrows going all over the place, right? Culture, it's like the word culture, it's like mushrooms and fungus. That you know there's a reason why fungus is called culture and culture, that's kind of where the word comes from. I mean, it might not be, but it's quite a nice way of remembering that culture develops and it get people steal things and they borrow things and it goes around and no one truly owns yeah, something. Yeah, literally. That's kind of really you know? why I like, like Louisa Fashion, because it's like, it's based off of Rococo and yeah. Victorian era, but it's a purely Japanese style of fashion. Yeah. Nobody really ever makes, ever makes it other than like um, some Chinese brands, like mm -hmm. one or two Korean brands, and then like, a couple really small independent Japanese yeah. brands. It's like like things like techno music, so like some people might say it started in Berlin. It didn't start in Berlin, the wall came down in Berlin. There was a lot of parties. So the part and they're still going on a lot of those parties by the way. Um, and it's great, but actually techno music can then be traced back to Detroit, the black community that was born out of like this sort of jazz movements and things like that. So it's like how do things start off? Do they start off because someone's invented something or do they start off because it becomes a trend? Because of like, in that case in Berlin, it was because of liberation. So liberation, all of a sudden people could have parties because they got out of an oppressive co communist regime and moved into like a free regime. And so all of a sudden there's capitalism as well, moving away from communism. So that, that doesn't mean that techno music started there though. Techno music started off in many different other places. Um, anyway, so the, the key is to always think like that. It's like question where things come from and how things influence each other, how they weave over each other. I'm just go back. Like, <coughs> so Jeremy Deller one. Jeremy Deller's a great artist. I think you should all look into him. But uh, spider diagram. And um, yeah, this was it. Just to remind you. Uh, so yeah, he does lots of all kinds of stuff. So he was on my podcast. So he's on the Artcast podcast. If you look up Artcast Morning Radio on Spotify. Um, but yeah, he's done all kinds of things. So he recreated the Battle of Orgreave. Does anyone know what the Battle of Orgreave was? So the Battle of Orgreave was the riots that I came out of Thatcherism. Is my presentation done now? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but the point is, this is this is like not his most visual artwork, but this is showing you that this is how things happen, right? So, man, mad, isn't it? But you can just sort of see, like, well, obviously, craft work are very. I'm gonna stop that because this is. So, yeah. <laughs>